Welcome everyone about a lesson on Mastering Zero Trust, a comprehensive guide to modern cybersecurity. In this lesson, we'll dive deep into the principles, components, and implementation strategies of the Zero Trust security approach. We'll cover a range of topics that will empower you to adopt a Zero Trust security framework and strengthen your overall cybersecurity posture. So let's begin by exploring the core concepts and foundations of Zero Trust security. So what is zero trust? Zero trust assumes that no entity is a trustworthy by default, even, with, uh, even within the network perimeter. It shifts the focus from perimeter-based security to robust identity verification mechanisms. Zero trust requires ongoing verification of users, devices, and applications to continuously authenticate access. So in this image, it visually represents the concept of zero trust while, you know, with the light bulb above the person head, um, symbolizing the need for constant verification and authentication. The modern threat landscape is constantly evolving and traditional security approaches are no longer sufficient to protect against the latest cyber threats. Zero trust security addresses these challenges by verifying every user, device, and application before granting access, regardless of their location or network. This is particularly important in cloud environments where resources are distributed across multiple platforms and traditional perimeter-based security models uh, break down. Now, the remote and hybrid work models have introduced new vulnerabilities as employees access sensitive data in systems from outside the traditional corporate network. So zero trusts help secure this distributed access point. Insider threats, whether malicious or accidental, pose a significant risk. Zero trust mitigates these risks by continuously verifying user identity and access privileges. IAM, or what we call as identity and access management, is the foundation for implementing zero trust principles, ensuring proper authentication and authorization. Now, MFA, multi-factor authentication, adds layers of security by requiring multiple forms of verification before granting access. Now, adaptive access controls dynamically adjust access based on context, user behavior, and risk factors. So as you know, IAM is critical for establishing the trust required in a zero trust architecture by combining a strong um, authentication, authorization, and adaptive controls. IAM helps organizations secure access and limit the impact of breaches. Let's talk about another topic about micro-segmentation in zero trust. Microsegmentation is a key component of the zero trust security model. It involves dividing the network into small isolated segments or zones. And this limits the ability of hackers or attackers to move laterally across the network if they gain access. Now granular access control policies are then implemented to carefully control traffic between these segments. And this allows you to isolate um, potential security breaches within um, specific zones, preventing them from spreading. So the goal is to create a more secure, resilient network architecture that is better equipped with uh, to withstand modern cyber threats. So on this slide, um, it introduces our continuous monitoring and analytics capabilities, which are key to keeping our network and users secure. First, we should have or we have real-time analysis that continuously monitors network traffic and user behavior to detect any anomalies or suspicious activity. Next, we used advanced AI and machine learning models to identify potential security threats before they can cause damage. And finally, we can generate a comprehensive reports to support compliance requirements and security audits, giving stakeholders full visibility into the health of our system. So together, these capabilities provide a robust security posture that proactively protects our organization. Now let's talk about developing a zero trust um, strategy. 
So we'll start by assessing your current security architecture and identifying any gaps that needs to be addressed. Next, we'll focus on identifying your most critical assets, which are the data, the applications, and systems that require the highest level of protection. Now, understanding how data flows through your organization is, is key. So we're going to map those data flows to implement effective security controls. And finally, we'll define comprehensive security policies that align with zero trust principles to protect your organization. So throughout this process, the aim is to move away from the traditional perimeter-based security model towards a zero trust approach that verifies every user, every device, and every transaction. Implementing Zero Trust Architecture, or ZTA. ZTA is a security model that assumes no user or device is trusted by default, even if they are inside the network perimeter. The key, prin key principles of ZTA are to verify users, verify the devices, um, the networks, and the applications before um, granting access. So for users, we need to identify or we need to implement strong identity verification and access management control. And for devices, we must ensure they are authenticated, authorized, and continuously monitored to ensure um, security. The network segmentation and strict access controls between network segments are very critical to limit the spread of threats. Then we have applications um, that must be secured with authentication, encryption, and the least privileged access, or LPA, to protect sensitive data and functionality. So implementing this as CTA principles helps organizations reduce the attack surface and better protect against modern cybersecurity threats. Establishing trust zones. So sensitive data is the lifeblood of our organization. So it's critical that we properly identify and classify it. So by establishing a secure um, isolated zones to store and process this sensitive information, we can dramatically reduce the risk of breaches or leaks. Now, implementing strict access controls is key to ensuring only authorized personnel can enter and exit these tr uh, trust zones. Continuous monitoring and logging of all activities within the trust zones allows us to quickly detect and respond to any suspicious behavior. Let's talk about SDP, Software Defined Perimeter. SDP is a security model that creates um, individualized perimeters for each user, device, and connection. And this ensures precise security boundaries, unlike traditional network perimeter. SDP keeps the network infrastructure hidden from unauthorized users, reducing the attack surface and preventing reconnaissance. Compared to traditional VPNs, SDPs offer more granular control and better security, enabling a zero-trust architecture. Endpoint Detection and Response, or EDR. EDR is a critical security tool that uh, helps protect your organization's devices from advanced threats. EDR tools monitor endpoints like laptops, desktops, servers, and alert you to suspicious activity for potential attacks. This allows your security team to quickly detect and uh, respond to threats, preventing data breaches and other security incidents. EDR also supports proactive threat hunting, where your team can actively search for hidden threats across the network. Now, keeping endpoints up to date with the latest security patches is another key function of EDR, and this ensures vulnerabilities are quickly addressed. So overall, EDR provides comprehensive endpoint protection and visibility, and empowering your organization to stay secure in the face of evolving cyber threats. Let's talk about SASE, or Secure Access Service Edge. It's a cloud-based security approach that combines networking and security functions into single and integrated platform. This cloud-based model offers flexibility and scalability, allowing organizations to deliver security services through the cloud. A key benefit of SASE is its global reach, providing secure access to resources um, anywhere in the world. So the convergence of networking 
and security functions into a single platform simplifies management and improves overall um, security posture. So as you see, SASE enables organizations to securely connect users, devices, and applications regardless of their location through a cloud-delivered security um, solution. So benefits of zero trust. Um, as you see, right, on the image, it represents a secure and reliable nature of a zero trust approach to data protection. It suggests that zero trust can help prevent data breaches by limiting access to sensitive information. One key benefit of zero trust is enhanced data protection. By verifying user identity and device security before granting access, we can significantly reduce the risk of data breaches. Another important benefit is uh, insider threat mitigation. Zero trust helps an address risks posed by malicious or negligent insiders who may try to access sensitive data they shouldn't have. And finally, zero trust can improve compliance by providing comprehensive security controls and monitoring to meet regulatory requirements. And this helps organizations avoid costly fines and reputational damage. Challenges in zero trust adoption. Zero trust is a security model that requires continuous verification of users, devices, and applications before granting access to resources. While zero trust offers significantly security benefits, its adoption can face several key challenges. First is budget constraints. Budget constraints can make it difficult to invest in the necessary infrastructure and tools to implement zero trust. Legacy systems that don't support modern security protocols can hinder the transition to a zero trust architecture. Now, employees may resist changes to familiar workflows and access methods creating a cultural resistance to zero trust. The complexity of designing and maintaining a comprehensive zero trust system can also be a significant barrier to adoption. So overcoming these challenges require careful planning, stakeholder buy-in, and a phased approach to implementation. Zero trust in cloud environments. Zero trust, again, um, is critical, right, in cloud environments to secure dynamic and distributed nature of cloud res resources. Now let's look at how zero trust can be applied to different cloud service models like SaaS, IS, and PaaS. For SaaS security, you need to implement strong identity management to control access to cloud-based application. We need to enforce data protection and policies to secure sensitive information in the SaaS tools. We also need to continuously monitor user activity and access controls to detect and respond to or respond to threats. IS protection, we can use micro-segmentation to isolate cloud infrastructure components and limit lateral movement. Um, continuously monitor virtual resources and networks to identify anomalies and security risk, and automate security controls and policies across dynamic IS environment. What about PaaS? So we can apply zero trust principles to develop to the development of platforms and APIs to ensure secure application deployment. We can enforce security access and authorization controls for developers and integrator integrations. We also need to continuously monitor and audit the PaaS environment for potential vulnerabilities or misconfigurations. Identity-centric uh, security is also very important for protecting data and resources in the cloud. Now, IDPs, or Identity Providers, centralize identity management across multiple cloud services, making it easier to control user access. SSO, or single sign-on, streamlines user access by allowing them to authenticate once and access various cloud apps while maintaining strong security controls. Conditional access policies can be implemented to control access to cloud resources based on factors like device, location, and user risk. Let's talk about a case study about a global bank that is implementing a zero trust security architecture. So the key challenges were securing access for over 100,000 employees across 50 countries. Now to address this, the bank implemented the zero trust architecture 
focusing on strong identity and access management and micro-segmentation in the network. As a result, they achieve a 90% reduction in security incidents and improve regulatory compliance. So this demonstrates the real-world benefits that organizations can achieve by adopting zero-trust security model. I'll highlight the key steps they took and the positive outcomes they experienced. So what are the lessons from the zero trust failures? Zero trust, again, is uh, as becoming increasingly important, but many organizations have struggled with its implementation. This slide highlights some common pitfalls that have led to failures in zero trust deployments. So first is uh, lack of planning. So rushed rollouts without proper planning can leave security gaps and frustrate users who don't understand the new system. Now applying zero trust inconsistently without full coverage across all systems create vulnerabilities that undermine the entire approach. Inadequate training for employees on how zero trust works means they may find ways to bypass the security measures. And last is legacy systems that are not properly integrated into the zero trust architecture can become weak points that attackers can exploit. Let's talk about the zero trust best practices. Um, of course, first, starting small is key. Make incremental changes to build momentum and gain support within the organization. Identity is the foundation of zero trust, so prioritize strong identity verification to ensure on only authorized users can access your systems and data. Align zero trust principles with your existing security framework and integrate zero trust into your current policies and processes for a seamless transition. So the goal is to create a security environment where trust is continuously validated rather than assumed. And this helps to protect against modern threats like data breaches and unauthorized access. The future of zero trust will be shaped by key technology trends like AI, IoT, and edge computing. AI will enhance threat detection and response, allowing for more proactive and intelligent security. Zero trust principles will be adapted to ensure the growing number of IoT devices, which often lack traditional security controls. And as computing becomes more distributed at the edge, zero trust will evolve to secure this dispersed environment. So this advancements will help organizations stay ahead of the rapidly changing security landscape and protect against emerging threats. All right, that's the end of the lesson. Thank you very much for watching the video.